experiment is going to be um, speed versus slow in the cold. So um, it's not as cold as my first test, it's 29 degrees, um, but that's at least still cool. And uh, so I'm gonna do two legs today. Um, the first one I'm gonna go slower, and I haven't actually decided if I'm gonna go 60 miles an hour or 65 miles an hour on the freeway. 60 is just so painfully slow, I don't know if I can do it. Um, so it'll probably end up being 65. But anyway, I'm gonna do that first um, because uh, it's easier to go slow when there's a lot fewer cars. And uh, there's gonna be fewer cars, well, there's gonna be more cars as the morning um, goes on. So I'll do that first, um, charge up a little again, and then um, do a, a baseline 75 miles per hour lap and see what the difference is. I will have some heat on too. Um, I'm gonna keep myself comfortable. Um, so I'm not sure which heat elements I'll have on, but as long as I have it on the same uh, amount for both legs, um, it should be fine. And I'll be preheating the cabin while I'm charging at both legs, so it's um, even in an absolute sense, it shouldn't add too much um, energy use to the trip. So it looks like I've charged up to about where I used to be. I mean, where I was this morning. When I'm I want to make sure is that the battery doesn't have any more heating to do and there's usually these notched lines there. It's showing me that I don't, the problem is sometimes when you unplug then it shows that it actually has formed the battery all the way and um, like I said it's 28 degrees out, or actually it's probably 30 by now but anyway it's cold so I know even when I supercharging right now I was not getting the full um, the uh, full power because the battery was a little cold okay it's telling me that looks like we're good actually so all right let's get the show on the road all right I decided I'm going 60 miles an hour which I'm actually catching up to this truck which by the way I noticed it has a, a truck icon there See, there you go, okay. Accurately portrayed, so it looks like I gotta pass him. Because he's going less than 60, so let's get around this guy. But at least that's good to know, somebody's going, gonna be going slower than I am. 60 is painfully slow when you have plenty of space and the speed limit is high. That's one of the reasons I want to do this test is because uh, I remember on our road trip um, going out uh, to California and back in the, at the end of December in January, beginning of January, it was really cold and I was new to um, you know how much energy use would be used over long periods and I was a little bit caught off guard that like at going interstate speeds of 75, 80 miles per hour you have to charge quite a bit more than uh, TripAdvisor um, tells you you need to. And by quite a, quite a bit, I mean that um, if it tells you you'll get there with 20%, you might get there actually with um, maybe 10% if you're going really fast. So anyway, um, I would have liked to have known, okay, I, I don't care how much energy it'll use when I'm going 60 miles an hour. I want to know how much it's going to use you know, to go to speed limit and make good time. Um, and I never was really sure, so today's test will really help because um, I'm going to show the difference um, between 60 and 70 miles per hour, and that's useful in two ways. One, um, if you're going fast and you realize you're running out of energy, um, this will be a, this will give you a good feeling of how much how much energy you'll be able to conserve. Um, if you slow down uh, to the speed. And um, conversely, if you're trying to um, plan how much energy you want to get somewhere, this will give you an idea of, of how much uh, energy you need. Um, 
going as fast as you can. Um, now again, there are areas in the U.S. where the speed limit is actually higher than 75 miles per hour. Um, God bless those areas. But you're going to use more energy uh, going 85 miles per hour than you are um, at 75. Um, I can't really do that test around here because that's too fast. Uh, but maybe somebody in Nevada or Montana or somewhere in the middle of the U.S. can do those tests. Or maybe Bjorn can do it on the uh, Autobahn. That'd be nice. One of the bummers about going slow is that everybody's passing you. And I don't mean that like, oh, I want to catch up with the world, but it makes it look like the electric vehicle is like a slow, you know, compromising vehicle. So, you know, you kind of want to show them that it's this fast, really cool, slick car. So I guess I'll do that on the second leg. Looks like it's cloudy with a chance of soft serve ice cream. stats. Again, 34.4 miles, 11.2 kilowatt hours used for an average of 326 watt hours per mile. That's pretty good. Um, that's getting really close to um, the rated range. So um, you see, okay, it's kind of hard to see here. Oh, but there's a dotted line here. And that's, that's the average um, energy use based on my driving which you can adjust for five miles, 15 and 30 miles. And then the solid line below that is the rated um, range. And that's usually, you can't see it here because this tag is here, but uh, usually that's um, about 300 watt hours per mile. And my suspicion is that something close to that is what TripAdvisor uses to calculate how much energy you're gonna use. Um, and uh, so going 60 miles an hour um, with, not a whole lot of heat stuff on. I had the, let's see, I had the steering wheel heater on, my seat heater on, which those are pretty negligible, and then I kept the um, um, air heater on to 73 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, obviously that's not Celsius. So moderate to low um, uh, heat use, and I was able to keep the energy use at 326 watt hours per mile, so that's that's really good. So let's compare that now with um, 75 miles per hour. I'm going to keep the same heat settings on, and um, yeah, we'll see what the difference is. I'm going to charge up maybe for about five minutes, um, and that'll be it. charger. Let's check out the stats. All right, so 34.4 miles use 12.5 kilowatt hours um, and average 363 watt hours per mile. So, um, and you can see the temperature is a little bit warmer. We're about, well, I guess by the end of the trip we're five degrees warmer. So, um, but anyway, so that is about um, 30 watt hours per mile difference um, using, or not using, uh, traveling 75 miles per hour versus 60 miles per hour um, averaged over about 35 miles. So I need to interrupt here because I realized um, as I went on talking in the car, I had actually used the wrong calculation. So I want to go to go over some of these differences uh, right now. <clears throat> so uh, going 60 miles an hour, I use 326 watt hours per mile, as opposed to 363 uh, going 75 miles per hour. The difference there is 37 watt hours per mile. So um, that's actually pretty good. Um, 
Now, let's extrapolate that over a 100 mile trip, which um, a lot of superchargers are 100 miles uh, apart. So, the uh, over 100 miles, that means I would use 3.7 kilowatt hours more going 75 miles per hour than 60 miles per hour. Um, that's about a 10% difference. And um, assuming that the 70D has a functional battery capacity of about 65, which I really don't know, that's an estimate, uh, but that's about 5 to 6% of uh, the battery, um, which is pretty good. Um, and again, if you have a bigger battery, either the um, former 85 or the um, 90 kilowatt hour battery, um, it's going to be that that 3.7 kilowatt hours is going to be a smaller percentage of your total energy. And you know, let's say you're in dire straits. If you combine that with range mode, uh, lowering the heat, driving smoothly, um, those kind of things, you could make that difference uh, even greater. So um, huge difference? No, not really. I would still say significant though. And of the things that I've tested so far. Um, which has been, uh, let's see, what else did we do? We did the heater and we did range mode tests. So of the things that I've tested, speed is um, the greatest impact on the range um, or conversely, the most impactful way to save energy if you're reducing speed, at least reducing it this much. This was a 15 miles per hour uh, difference. So. And then there's also time to consider. So if you go, um, so the, the, the time difference in my trip, uh, it was, you know, going 34 miles at 60 miles per hour is 34 minutes. And then uh, going 75 miles per hour, that's 27 minutes. Uh, so that's a difference of seven minutes, which doesn't sound like much, but let's extrapolate that to 100 miles. That's over three times as much. So three times seven is 21. So you're looking at between 20 and 25 minutes of extra driving uh, for each supercharger visit. So, and let's say, you know, on, on our trip, I was going to sometimes, let's see, at least four, maybe even more, maybe like five um, superchargers per day. And each is a, each of them is about a hundred miles apart. Some of them more, some of them uh, less. But so five times uh, twenty minutes each. That's an hour extra of of just straight up driving. So that leads to the question: Well, is it better? Would you save more time by going slow and hypermiling, or is it faster to just hang out at the supercharger a little bit longer? Almost always the supercharger will add um, miles to your car faster than you can drive them. So I will, as far as I know, it's almost always to, it's almost always better to charge for an extra five minutes so that you don't have to slow down and add, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes uh, to your leg of the trip. Uh, that's, that's definitely a take home message here. Um, yeah, but that doesn't speak to the situation where you're driving along and then maybe because of weather, wind, uh, or other conditions, uh, that all of a sudden you don't have as much juice as you thought you did. Uh, well, these are parameters that significantly reduce, um, energy usage. So I hope that's been helpful. Um, again, the absolute value of energy that I use, which is 363 watt hours per mile, is kind of neither here nor there. Um, in warmer conditions, it'll be more efficient. In colder conditions, it'll be less efficient, and various other conditions. So, um, you know, that's not a hard and fast rule. But I think the take home message here is that uh, reducing your Reducing your speed from 75 to 60 miles an hour definitely saves energy, which stretched over a long range is uh, quite significant, like I talked about. Um, but, you know, if you're only going a short distance and you have plenty of battery, it's really not going to make a whole lot of difference. Uh, so anyway, hope that was helpful and interesting, and I will see you in the next video.